So who were the Neanderthals? Neanderthals are our closest extinct human relative. Some defining features of their skulls include the large middle part of the face, angled cheekbones, and a huge nose for humidifying and warming cold dry air. Their bodies were shorter and stockier than ours, another adaptation to living in cold environments, but their brains were just as large as ours and often larger, proportional to their brawnier bodies. Neanderthals made and used a diverse set of sophisticated tools, controlled fire, lived in shelters, made and wore clothing, were skilled hunters of large animals, and also ate plant foods, and occasionally made symbolic or ornamental objects. There is evidence that Neanderthals deliberately buried their dead and occasionally even marked their graves with offerings, such as flowers. No other primates and no earlier human species had ever practiced this sophisticated and symbolic behavior. So what makes you Neanderthal? Ever since geneticists sequenced the first Neanderthal genome in 2010, researchers have been reporting just how related humans are to their ancient extinct cousins. Since then, there's been more research and more and more. As it turns out, non-African modern humans have Neanderthals to thank for 1-4% to of their DNA. The two species were thought to have interbred around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago, based on the Neanderthal DNA found in anatomically modern human specimens and people living today. But scientists had yet to find a signature of such mating interactions in Neanderthal DNA until now. Instead of leaving fragments of Neanderthal DNA in modern humans, we find fragments of modern human DNA in the Neanderthal genome, says Adam Sapil, a computational biologist who heads the Quantitative Biology Program at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in Cold Springs Harbor, New York. Dr. Sapil, as part of an international team of geneticists, anthropologists, and computer scientists, found that a Neanderthal specimen from Siberia shared at least 1% of its DNA with modern humans, and that mating event happened some 100,000 years ago. Shared genes. Why is it significant that the gene flow goes in both directions? It may seem obvious because when two people mate, both parents' DNA ends up in their offspring. But this individual with just 1-7% to modern human DNA was not the direct result of such an interaction. So this Neanderthal was a descendant of that event. I think the fact that we see it in both directions is notable because of the inherent asymmetry of these interbreeding events, Peel says. He explains that because children usually stay with their mother, that means that a human male probably mated with a Neanderthal female to produce this lineage. The hybrid offspring was then raised in a Neanderthal community, or perhaps in a more unlikely scenario. The interspecies family was integrated into the Neanderthal community as a unit. Obviously, these are only speculations, but the fact that we see both types of gene flow does suggest that Neanderthal-human hybrids were successfully integrated into both human and Neanderthal societies. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to tap the notification bell button to stay up to date for upcoming videos.